Ascension Island lies in the center of the Atlantic. It was created only recently by volcanic eruptions, at least in geological terms. It's only around one million years old. Being both young and remote, much of Ascension is barren, yet it's far from lifeless. As nightfall reveals, I can see, yeah, that's one coming out of the water right there. A green turtle. She's traveled all the way from feeding grounds off the coast of Brazil to Ascension's remote beaches, where she digs her nest under the cover of darkness. When she's dug deep enough, she fills the hole with her clutch of eggs, then returns to the sea. Meanwhile, on other beaches on the island, Ascension land crabs are assembling. They live on the island's mountains, but must return to the sea to lay their eggs. The females are laden with eggs and carry them down to the water's edge and allow the waves to wash them away. Ascension land crabs are not the only native crustacean to have colonized the island. These barren lava flows seem devoid of life. Yet, there are a few tiny areas where life thrives. Much of the wildlife is localized to tiny areas. These little ponds here, this is the entire habitat for two species of shrimps. This is the only place in the world where they occur. The nearest relative of these shrimps live in the Caribbean. And how they came to this tiny island in the center of the ocean is still a mystery. One suggestion is that they were able to use caves in submerged volcanoes, seamounts, as stepping stones from the Caribbean to Ascension. With their power of flight, the island has been more easily colonized by seabirds. The island is so remote, there are no predators here making it a safe place for seabirds to nest. And they did so in extraordinary numbers. Today, over 400,000 sooty terns nest on the island. But just a few years ago, these were the only seabirds surviving on Ascension. The problem was rats, cats, and mice introduced by passing ships. Since the animals have lived here for thousands of years without land predators, they have relatively little fear. And that lack of experience with predators proved their undoing. <laughs> these vast bird populations are unfortunately incredibly vulnerable. And these sooty tons demonstrate the point. They're just not adapted to cope with introduced predators. Their only defense is to squawk, peck, or fly away. And because they nest directly on the ground, of course the cats, the rats and the mice just decimated the chicks and the eggs. And as a result, their numbers plummeted. Cats, rats and mice eliminated all the other seabird species on the island. The sooty terns survived partly because their population was so large that the predators couldn't kill them all in one breeding season. But at the end of the breeding season, all these birds leave the island and live over the open ocean. There was nothing left for the cats, rats and mice to eat, so many starved, and they could never build up into enough numbers to wipe out the terns. But there's one place where we can catch a glimpse of what much of Ascension would once have looked like. The bird life had one safe haven, 
This little island here is called Bosun Bird Island, and it's sufficiently far and isolated from the mainland for the rats, the cats, and the mice to be unable to swim to it. Many of the bird species became extinct on the mainland of Ascension, but they survived there. It's not an easy place to reach. But climbing to the top of the island, I'm immersed in the sights, sounds, and smells of a tropical seabird colony in full swing. Many kinds of seabirds nest here. The top of the island is covered with masked boobies. But the most special bird here is the Ascension Island frigate. Ascension is the only place on Earth where this bird nests. When the Ascension frigate bird was wiped out from the mainland, this is the only place in the world where it survived. About 10,000 pairs live here. And if it wasn't for this island, the species would be completely extinct. Conservationists on the island monitor the population, but clearly, Bosun Bird Island is too small a place to give the species a secure future. Starting in 2002, a cat eradication program was begun, and by 2004, Ascension was declared cat free. Soon after, seabirds began to reclaim lost ground. Mask boobies returned to nest on the mainland. They were joined by brown boobies, and noddy terns. The only species reluctant to return was the threatened Ascension frigate. Then, when I was on the island in 2012, something remarkable happened. In late 2012, two pairs of Ascension frigate birds returned back to the mainland. Of those two pairs, one failed to raise a chick, the other succeeded. This little fella here in front of me is the very first Ascension frigate bird chick back on the mainland of Ascension for over 180 years. And on Ascension's beaches, the next generation of green turtles is also hatching. They dig their way from beneath the sand and make a mad dash down to the sea. The hatched eggs draw Sally Lightfoot crabs that scavenge the beach for anything edible. Although at first glance, Ascension Island seems barren and lifeless, in reality, there are many creatures that call this place home. And for some, this remote volcano in the center of the ocean is their only home anywhere on Earth. The Britain's Treasure Islands book explores the unique wildlife, cultures and history of all of the UK overseas territories. Visit britainstreasureislands.com for details. In sincere thanks to Lord Ashcroft for funding the donation of one copy of the Britain's Treasure Islands book to every secondary school across the UK and her overseas territories. Thanks also to all Kickstarter backers and all sponsors and partners for making the 40 mini documentaries possible.